Hey, now this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but I want you to imagine that this ball right here represents your prayers. Every single one of us wants our prayers to leave our hearts and to go straight to heaven. But did you know this? If you are doing any of these four things, your prayers won't go any further than the ceiling. So what is it you're actually trying to say, Joe? What I'm trying to say is this. Sometimes prayer can be a waste of time. And I'm gonna give you four reasons, four ways that sometimes prayer can be totally pointless. Number one is this, when we ignore the poor people around us. The Bible says, whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Rumour has it that the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, used to keep chickens in his back garden. And people sort of thought, it's very odd that this great big preacher with all of this money keeps chickens and then sells the eggs on for a profit. But Spurgeon insisted, anyone who wants to buy my eggs, they must pay the correct price. I'm not going to give them away for free. And then people started to sort of gossip about Mr and Mrs Spurgeon. Oh, they're just so money hungry. They're so greedy. They're miserly, the Spurgeon. Until this happened. When Mrs. Spurgeon eventually passed away, the secret was revealed. Mr. and Mrs. Spurgeon had been using every single penny they got from those egg sales to fund two elderly widows who live nearby. And just like Charles Spurgeon, you and I have poor people on our doorstep. You and I know about poor people in different nations. And perhaps God might just be nudging each and every one of us to think this very day, is there a poor person? Is there a poor nation? Is there somebody poor who is crying out for help today? And I could do something about it. Because if that's the case, I pray that every single one of us would do something about it. An Indian friend of mine once taught me a valuable lesson about money. He said, if you've got an open palm, God can put money into your palm, but he can also take money out of it to give to other people. But if you've got a closed palm, okay, yeah, the money's not gonna go anywhere, but neither can God take money out to give to people, and neither can he put money in. It's true, isn't it? If we want God to open his treasury box, we've got to be willing to open ours too. The second reason why our prayers might not get very far is when we doubt. James chapter one, verse six says this, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, please don't judge me if I tell you this, but one of my weird hobbies is I love swimming in absolutely freezing cold water. And I remember one year I was snorkeling with grey seals off the Northern Irish coast. And as I was swimming, I saw something which shocked me, which scared me so much that I swam as fast as I could to the shore. I was like a bolt of lightning, I was gone. No, it wasn't a shark. Do you know what it was? It was brown, filthy sewerage on the top of the water and it was floating towards me. And we've all kind of seen it before, haven't we? We've seen plastic, we've seen rubbish, we've seen that froth on the top of the ocean and it goes back and it goes forth and it's, it's tossed to and fro. Well, that's what the Bible says the double-minded person is like. They never ever find peace. They never ever find rest. I wonder if I asked you the question, are you a restless person? What might you say? If I look myself in the mirror and tell myself the truth, I know that I'm a restless man and I can be double-minded. Some mornings I'll wake up and I'll plead with God, Lord, I pray that you would bless this ministry. Please win souls into your kingdom. Please encourage Christians and break bonds in their life. And then when afternoon comes and the haters start writing comments to me or the pressure of the work gets to me, I think thoughts like this. I don't even want to be in ministry anymore. This is too much, Lord. Please help me. I can't do this anymore. If you're like me, and at times you do feel restless, let's all come to the God of peace who can lead us to those still waters and restore to us the joy of our salvation. And the third way that our prayers can be hindered is when we harbour a spirit of unforgiveness. Jesus once said this, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him 
and your Father in heaven may also forgive you for your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. We're just so hypocritical, aren't we? After everything that God has done for us, after all the love that he has lavished upon us, pouring out such extravagant love to us, forgiving us because Jesus shed his blood on the cross for our sins, giving us eternal life, clothing us in the righteousness of Christ Jesus, putting a new song in our mouth, giving us a hope beyond the grave. After all of this, and yet you and I refuse to show forgiveness sometimes to people who've hurt us or wronged us or dragged our name through the dirt. If that's you, if that's me, let me say this. If you and I hold on to red hot bitter stones, we're the ones who are going to get burnt, not the other person. Just today I was reading a story about Yellowstone National Park and here we are, there was this big huge grizzly bear and it found an empty campsite and was helping itself to all of this food. And then along trots a little skunk and it sort of muscles its way in and also starts to try and eat at the camp food. Now everyone was thinking, what's the grizzly bear going to do? Is it going to hit it? Is it going to shoo it off? Get lost skunk, this is my food? No, the grizzly bear shared the camp food. Why did he do it? Because he knew that starting a fight with that skunk would cost him far too much. And so it is with you and I. If we pick fights and we choose not to forgive people, it costs us too. And God says, if you're not willing to forgive that person, neither am I willing to forgive you. And lastly, number four, when we cherish sin in our hearts, when we hold on to it, that completely destroys our prayer life. The prophet Isaiah once said this, but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. It is sad, but very often people write to me, Joe, I'm really struggling in sin and I feel like God is a million miles away from me. And as we go further and further into the emails, they tell me, yes, there's a, a sin hidden in my pocket. I'm having a relationship with my girlfriend and we're doing things outside of marriage. I'm taking drugs and I know I shouldn't. I've been cheating on a test. That There's lies, there's sin, there's things they're hiding. And because they hide their sin, God hides from them. Here's how an Eskimo kills a wolf. They take a huge big knife, a huge big blade, and they stick it in the snow. And then they cover that blade in animal blood. And the wolf, with its very strong sense of smell, sniffs out the blood and comes and starts to lick it. The knife, the blade starts to cut its mouth, but it, it keeps licking, it keeps licking that blade until what happens to its tongue? It gets stuck to that cold metal and it's trapped and then it's killed. And do you know something? Since we're on the subject of prayer, I pray every single day for all of those of you who subscribe to this channel, who struggle with repetitive sin. I believe this is a ministry that has just fallen into my lap. It's not something I went searching for, but it's what the Lord has given, and I see it as a tremendous privilege. So from now on, I'm going to pray a new prayer. I'm gonna pray that every single one of us would see just how disgusting sin is, just how deceitful it is, just how it robs us of absolutely everything, that you and I would get to that point where we totally renounce all sin and realize that God is an all or nothing God. God isn't content to share a piece of your heart. He isn't content to share 75%, 80%. No, he wants 100% of you. He wants the whole thing and he deserves all of you because he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross. He bought us with a price. He's our creator, he's our maker. And the best thing we can do is come to him in faith, trust the Lord Jesus Christ and turn from our sins. If you need motivation for it, what about this one? Jesus said this, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I wanna see God, don't you? One last thing before you go. Last summer, I went on holiday to Scotland. I think in the States you call it vacation. So I went on a vacation uh, to the very top of Scotland and I filmed all of God's wonderful creation. It really was quite a precious time. And then what I decided to do is I took all of that footage and I put a prayer behind it. 
If you'd like to listen to that very short prayer, please click on this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please click here. We love your friendship here at Off The Curve Ministries. God bless you all and thank you for watching.